Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to take a look at the instructions for uh, frets on fire. And uh, the first thing you guys have to know is that the, this is gonna come configured for Xbox controllers out of the box. Um, and it's also gonna be configured for a PS2 guitar, just because that's what I have on hand. And just to let you know, that is not the optimal guitar really to use because you can't use the whammy bar on it. Uh, it doesn't have some of the more modern features that some of the other guitars for like Xbox 360 and stuff like that have. So I would say that getting an Xbox 360 compatible guitar would probably be, be the best choice. Um, but I'm using this because that's what I have in hand. But again, it also comes configured for Xbox 360 controllers. All right. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to add other, other guitars and other controllers if you guys get them. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and exit Hyperspin. So let's go to the toolkit, exit to Windows. And we're going to go ahead and go over to the R drive. This is for the 16 terabyte setup. And we're going to go over here to frets on fire. Uh, so these are all of the different versions of Guitar Hero and Rock Band and stuff like that that you have access to. Uh, most of these are actually frets on fire. Some of them are not. For example, uh, let's go to Metallica. This one is, is, is a different program. If we open it up. Yeah, so it's called Face Shift. And it, it's basically the same idea as, as um, frets on fire, but it's just a different program. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here because I'm going to start you guys off with uh, frets on fire first. Okay, so let's go back into Band Hero, which I know it's a frets on fire uh, version. So let's say you want to add a controller in that is not an Xbox uh, controller or is not the PS2 guitar. You would start up the program. And you just go to options and I'm just using my keyboard right now, the up and down arrows and enter to select things. So here you would go to control settings and then right here you can see that it's set to controller one, two, three, and four. Uh, controller one is set to default guitar, controller two is set to drums. So what you'd want to do is scroll left and right to the different options that you have with with the arrow keys. So I'm doing that right now with the arrow keys. So I already have Xbox and Xbox two for the second player in here. And then I have the uh, PS2 guitar in here. And the way I created those is I went over here to new controller hit enter on that. You can give it a name. Let's, let's just say test for this purpose. I'm going to hit enter. And then right here you have all of the, all of the um, assignments, right? So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, let's go up to the top. All right. So first of all, you have to tell it what kind of, what kind of, uh, controller type it is. So let's say we want to add it as a guitar. We leave it on standard guitar. Then it's asking you what you want the pick to be. So, you know, if you have a handheld controller, you press enter and then you press whatever button you want the pick to be right now. I'm holding the PS2 keyboard, um, uh, guitar in my hand. So I am going to press down on the pick and you can see that it took that input. Then I'm going to go to secondary pick and I'm going to press up on the pick and there you go. And now you have fret one, two, three, four, and five. So, you know, I would press enter and I'm going to hit my fret one button, which is the green button, then fret two, which is the red and so on and so forth. And you just go through all of the different inputs that you have here. Now, obviously, um, you don't have all of these things on something like a PS2 guitar because these some of these are more advanced features on newer guitars. And uh, I don't know if I already said this, but one of the disadvantages also of the PS2 guitars, you cannot use the whammy bar on it. Um, so not the best to use, but you can still play and have fun with it. It's just not the best thing to use. So anyway, when you're done with all of, the, all of that, you would hit escape. And now that controller is available. If you go over here to controller one and scroll left and right, there's, there's your test that we just made. All right. So that's as simple as that gets. Now I already have Xbox in here, so you can set it to Xbox and then you would set player two to Xbox two. If you wanted to add players three and four on other Xbox controllers, just go to new controller, create those controllers, map all of them, 
name one Xbox 3, name one Xbox 4, and then they would appear here for you. All right, and the way I mapped the Xbox controllers is I just matched the the color of the frets to the color of the face buttons on the controller, and then your um, your right trigger is uh, for is a trigger or a bumper? I think I did I did the left the right bumper. I'm sorry, right bumper to your um, your fifth fret. Okay, so the four face buttons are the the first four frets and then that right bumper is your fifth fret right trigger is I think star power and left trigger is um, I forgot what else that is um, let me see here so you've got oh you've got the yeah the whammy okay so that's why I made the left trigger the whammy all right so you, you guys can change this all you want you know you would just actually go over here to edit controller Enter on that, select the Xbox controller or whatever else, and you can just remap all of this to, you know, fit your liking, okay? So I think that about does it for frets on fire. It's going to be the same thing for all of the ones that start with frets on fire. Uh, that's how you configure all of those. And, uh, you know, these are other settings you can tweak if you like. You don't have to. Everything's pretty straightforward. Just look through it. Now, let me show you one trick. If you do go and you change all of these things, you don't really have to do it one by one. You can actually come in here to data, users, controllers, and then you can highlight all of this, copy, and then you can paste it to every single game and it'll have those same settings for every single game. So if we back up to the main directory, you can literally go to every game. So you would go to the next one, Aerosmith. You would go data. You would go to users, controllers. You can highlight all of this, delete it, and then right click paste. And it would paste the settings from the other game that you just changed right over here. And they will be available in this game. So once you do it in that one, copy paste it to everything and you're good to go. Except any games that start with the face shift program. And the way you know that is this little green looking icon right here. There, most of them are get are frets on fire. There's only a few that start with this program, but for that one, there's a different procedure. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated um, to do than 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 frets on fire. So, let's say you wanted to add a controller here that is not already supported. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, first of all, you want to go to their website, which I'll link below in the description and really read through the documentation right here because it's, it's pretty thorough. All right. So go ahead and do that. But, um, basically what you want to do is you want to use this controller profiler. All right. So if we open that up, it says to press any button on the controller you wish to use. So I'm going to do it on my PS2 guitar. And now it says, do not press any buttons and click go. All right, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to choose guitar right here in the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and do what it tells me. So it's telling me to press a, to uh, click on the button or access that's for the green button on the, on the frets, right? So I'm going to press the green button and it's, that one is lighting up up there. So I'm going to click on it. Now it says the red button. I'm going to press that on the guitar. That one is lighting up. So I'm going to click on it, yellow button click on it, blue button, click on it, orange button, click on it. Now up button would be to scroll up and down. That would be like your pick up. So if I press that, you can see that that's changing over there. So I'm going to click on that. And now it says to move it to its maximum and minimum position. So all the way up and then let it center again. Now I know that this guitar doesn't register properly in here. Uh, so I didn't even configure it for these type of games that are not frets on fire, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. Uh, I don't know if another guitar would be would be better and it would read better and configure itself properly. But um, let's just keep on moving here and I'm going to show you guys what I mean. So now that I did that, it says to press escape. So now it's asking me for the right button. I'm going to skip that by holding down escape or pressing escape. Now it's asking me for down. So I'm going to press the pick down. That one's lighting up again, so I click on it. it says to move it to the minimum and maximum. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it down, let go, press escape, 
left I'm gonna skip start button I'm gonna press that and I'm gonna click on this one uh, back button I'm gonna press that and I'm gonna click on this one strum up same thing as as up and down before right so strum up I'm gonna is that one there so I'm gonna click it again I'm gonna strum up let it center escape strum down it's gonna be the same thing so down let us center escape whammy again the whammy doesn't work on the ps2 guitar so i'm going to escape on that slider we don't have that on this guitar tilt we don't have that on this guitar so it says all done new ctrl data that text created so we're going to close this out and that's this right here now you're going to double click that and you want to copy this entire text copy that back up and go to i believe it was settings and uh, device list. All right, so these are all the pre-configured controllers that come out of the box with the software. So since we created a new one, we're gonna put that text we just copied in here. So up here, right in front of device, I'm gonna hit enter to create a new line, go up to that new line and right click paste. Now this is the text we just copied from before. It doesn't matter if there's a space there, but I'm gonna get rid of it. So you can see we have from the opening device to the closing device tag with the forward slash. And this is everything we just configured. The name of the PS2 adapter that lets you connect the keyboard, uh, the, um, I keep saying keyboard, the guitar to the computer is called Ostent PS2. Um, and if you look here, these are the, this is the green button, the red, the yellow, blue, these are their values, okay? Now, how do you get those values if you had to do this manually, which we are gonna have to do to fix the up and down and strum up and down? Because like I told you guys, that doesn't register properly with the PS2 guitar. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be any different with any other guitar. So if you had to fix that manually, you can go back to the frets on fire, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, Guitar Hero, the, the main directory um, for Metallica, which is what we were using. So you go to button data, that exe right there. It's telling you to press any button, right? So all this program does is it tells you what the values of the buttons are, right? So right now I'm pressing the green button, the green fret, fret one. So if you press it, it tells you that it's button 53 value 128. Now, if you look here at the green, you can see that is 53 comma 128. And then if I let go of the button, it goes to button 53 value zero. So the way it works is it wants you to put the, the number of the button, the number that it gives you when you press it down, and the number that it gives you when you press it, when you let go of it, right? So it's zero. So again, button 53 down, 128, let go, zero. So it's the same thing when you press on the on the up on the pick up on the strum up right so you strum up and hold it that's telling you that it's button four value zero and when you let go of it it's button four three two five one one so you would want this to read as four zero and then three two five one one so it's a little bit backwards here so you can delete this and then put a comma here and what was that number? 32511. So 32511. And then that would work properly. Now for down, let me press it down. It's telling you button 465535. And then when you let go of it, it goes to 32511. So that was actually correct, right? 465535. And then when you let go of it, it's 32511. So now that you have those two, you can copy the, the, the up and put it on strum up because it's the same thing. Paste. And then you copy down and you put it on strum down. Or is that one already correct? That one's already correct, so we'll leave it. And then you just hit save. And that's it, now you have your new device in there. Now again, I know this is a lot guys, but that's just the way it is and again, um, this is just with my guitar that I have to do this. I think with other guitars, it might be okay once you do it through that other graphical program. But if it doesn't work out correctly, you can go here and, um, and fix it like I just showed you. All right, so then here we are inside the program. And I can see that when I press the strum down, it goes down. When I press strum up, it goes up. And that's what you want. If I hadn't fixed it like I just showed you guys, 
this would be going crazy right now, strumming up and down on its own and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So that's why I had to fix it like that. Again, this program is very similar. Once once you get past that initial hurdle of the controller, um, everything in here is very simple. So if you want to change some options around, you can do that. Um, you know, you can go to quick play. And by the way, the music is going to be muted for obvious reasons. I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike. So um, just keep that in mind. But let's say we go to choose a song. I'm just pressing the the you know the green button on the guitar to do all this. There you go. I'm going to say I want it to be the guitar. Let's go to easy. Ready. Press the green button. There you go. Just give it a minute. Press green to begin. And we're in the song. can't hear anything because my volume is down but you get the idea and yeah guys that is going to be it uh, i think i pretty much covered everything i wanted to cover um, most of these to exit you're going to have to go through the menu instead of just pressing the, the your, you know your exit button or whatever but um yeah that's going to be it uh also you can you guys can configure this stuff with a um like an x arcade uh, joystick or an extension or anything like that. I mean, doing the exact same thing I just showed you guys, uh, you know, when it asks you to press a button uh, or an input, you just press the button on your on your controller. So it doesn't have to be a handheld controller or a guitar. You can also do it with just buttons on an arcade panel. All right. So yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Hope that was helpful and I will see you guys on the next one.